I caught crabs in Baltimore. In today's episode of Stealth Camp Baltimore, we unbox Renogy's solar panels and Z brackets, begin installing the solar panels, connect all the wires together, and finish by lubricating D's nuts. So stay tuned. So we're at the stage of the van construction where we're ready to start installing some solar panels. What we have here, we have Renogy high quality premium solar module. Uh, I have a 100 watt panel here in this box. Uh, All together I have four panels. So just to show you what the box looks like. And my understanding is that Renogy is one of the top producers uh, in terms of quality and uh, workmanship uh, for these 100 watt solar panels. I wanted to get the 200 watt uh, or bigger ones, but they discontinued those. Uh, they also had discontinued their flexible solar panels, which I, I know a couple of people have chosen those because they're bendable and they're much more stealth on the top of their van or RV or however they choose to use them and they're flexible. But these, and because these are rigid and they're mounted in an aluminum frame, that means that first these need to get attached to some brackets and then the brackets need to get attached to the van on the roof. So there's a lot of drilling and a lot of bolting and screwing involved. But anyways, so once I uh, ordered these Renogy panels, I ordered them off of Amazon. I'll provide the link down below in the description. The box, they come very well packaged. So the box is like a sandwich box uh, or a clamshell box and then inside it's a lot of foam and uh, some other packaging. And then getting through all that, what you have next is the solar panel. So let's take a closer look at that. So the dimensions of this panel are, it's 21 and a quarter inches wide by 47 and a quarter inches long. So it's just about 21 by 48, just slightly. And what you will see on the side, uh, well, first of all, this is, the frame is made out of aluminum and there's a glass cover. What I noticed as soon as I unboxed it, there's still some adhesive spots, maybe where they had some labeling stickers on the front of the glass uh, that they peeled off, but there was still some adhesive residue all throughout, all over the panel in different spots. So I just washed it down, I cleaned it with a rag and a little bit of dish soap uh, and it turned out good. My understanding is that you can use regular glass cleaner because this is supposed to be glass on top of the, or, you know, on top of sandwiching and protecting the actual solar units. And so let me show you the back. So the back, again, aluminum frame, there are holes drilled around the frame. Now, here's the thing, there are these brackets. These are called Z brackets because they create a Z shape and these brackets have to be ordered separately from Renogy. Uh, so they're the Renogy Z brackets. I'll leave a description or a link for and uh, in the description section uh, if you want to order them. And they have to, <laughs> you have to order them basically because they're also made out of this aluminum, so it's all rust proof. Um, and they're designed to attach directly to this, this frame. This is the bracket box. First, as you can see, it says Renogy, the future of clean energy. And the bracket box, I believe this costs $12 or $13. I ordered it off Amazon. Uh, I'll provide the link in the description. You get these aluminum custom, what they call Z-bolts, because they have that zigzag, like a Z, and it says Renogy on them, so you know they fit the panel. You get a couple of self-tapping screws that these are designed to drill down through metal or whatever to attach to the surface. And then you have some bolts and some screw, uh, some nuts, some flat washers, and some lock washers. We are now going to attach the Z bracket to the aluminum frame of the solar panel. So what you do is you take the side that says Renogy, face it outwards. You have these little tabs, these go up against, like, yeah, and there you go, it's attached. I have bolt washer on the front side going through 
On the back side, I have washer, then lock washer, and then nut. And let's see if we can get the camera to zoom in so you can see right in there. There we go. And then we just tighten everything up. Now there's a couple of mounting spots. You can either mount them towards the back end or mount them a little bit more towards the interior. So since I have four panels, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to try to interlock them in such a way as I have two of the panels that have the brackets on the outer edge and two of the panels that have the brackets on the inside edge. So there's a total of four brackets that I think are designed to go with this or that you use four brackets per frame. I'm sure you could use more, um, but they would always attach on the side. So you could have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight total brackets. But I think four should be good. And then at the very bottom, you have the leads, the positive and the negative lead. Um, it looks like there's about, let's say, 18 inches worth of uh, wiring there, uh, male end, female end. So we will get all that stuff attached. But first, I thought it easier to attach all the brackets for three over here, or the three over there, and then one here to get it all prepped up. And I'm also going to save the so let me sit this back over here. And I'm keeping the phone between each one. And I'll move this box again. I saved part of this packaging material, which is roughly the size of the panel with the brackets. So what I'm going to do with this packing material, since I have four of them, I'm going to mimic the panels with these, uh, so these are my stencils, and I'm going to put these on top of the van to measure out to see uh, how well they fit on top of the van. And my goal is, is that I have four panels, but I'd like to find room to get a fifth panel on there. So I'd love to have five total panels of 100 watts each for a total of 500 watts. All right, so what we got, we have the cardboard stencils. Uh, this was actually part of the insulation material for the solar panels, but they're basically the same size as the panels. So I wanted to take them out to the van and line them up to see how I would orient them and how many I could fit onto the roof of the van here. Uh, I have four uh, of these uh, stencils so far, and it looks like there's still space right there where we could put a fifth panel. So I'm going to be going on to Amazon to order a fifth panel. Uh, that will be great having 500 watts running through this. So, um, excellent. Looking forward to uh, it. I have two of the panels on so far. This is the third panel. Um, I've been drilling the mounting holes, really pilot holes, and I've been going back in and uh, hand tightening with the um, three-quarter inch galvanized sheet metal uh, fasteners. The provided screws that come with the Z bracket kit, the Renology Z bracket kit, uh, they're one inch long and they're self-tapping. They're so long that not only do they go through the bracket and the roof of the van, but then they also protrude and it's dangerous. Um, so when I tried to calculate out the thickness of the bracket plus the thickness of the sheet metal of the roof, plus the thickness of the Reflectix and the uh, expanded polystyrene insulation on the inside, I figure three quarter of an inch bracket would hold just as, or uh, screw head would hold just as well, but not protrude. It'll bury itself in the, um, the foam of the insulation and not stick out into the van. So just trying to think about the safety of it. Um, but we're putting four panels on and hopefully I'll have room for a fifth. Um, <coughs> What I'm also doing is I'm keeping the panels covered as I'm installing them. When I'm finished installing them, then I'll uncover all of it. Uh, but, you know, I keep them covered for protection, for safety, so I don't damage them. And also so that they don't get hot or start absorbing energy, because uh, I'm not ready for them to start uh, producing electricity just yet. By the way, I have all the wiring uh, for the male and female end for the polarity wiring, wiring on that side. Um, so I'm going to run all the wiring down that side of the van and then down through the tail light 
into the van to connect with the battery. Uh, so let me get back to it. When we're finished putting in all the fasteners for all the panels, we'll go back with some silicone caulk and caulk over top of the screw heads just to help a little bit with uh, keeping out the water. I don't think any water's gonna drip down, but you know, it's good to be careful just in case. We got our very last panel that we're going to install. That's number four, and it's gonna go right here. So I have that situated down here. I'm gonna lift it up and set it on, uh, show you how I place them and how I make the marks. Um, and you could join me as we get that last panel on and celebrate a job well done. All right, now that the solar panel is on the van, the last one, and it's in place, it's in position, uh, I have used my Sharpie marker here to um, draw the little holes, my guide holes. And now, let's adjust this around so I can get in here and start drilling my pilot holes. And let me put on my gloves, protect my hands. So what we got here, we have all four solar panels mounted on the roof of the van. And there's still space left over to put one more panel, which I'll order off of Amazon. So we'll end up with a total of 500 watts of direct current. All right, guys, so what we are going to do next, we have all the cable connectors. We're going to connect all the wires together on the top of the fan. We have male plugs here to a female here. Uh, they generally, in a pack, I bought these off of Amazon. It comes two to a pack. These are the MC4 parallel branch connectors. Uh, these are adapters. Um, so there's one uh, double male to single female, and there's one double female to single male in each package. And I bought uh, three packages. So I calculated out, unfortunately I calculated out for four panels how many of these branch connectors I would need to splice all these lines together or um, to integrate all these lines together into one cable. And I didn't factor on the, how I would have, uh, or I didn't take into account that we'd have space for one more panel, so I'd have five panels. Now I gotta try to figure that one in. Um, but I'll make it work, I'll figure it out. So now we're gonna assemble these, it's just plug and play. All right, so now everything is connected through the adapters, all integrated into one positive line and one negative line. And then we have the extension cords here that we can then uh, probably zip tie these underneath the frames. Um, so we take these and consolidate them and zip tie them underneath the frames and then we'll run this cable connecting everything and that'll go around into the back of the van. All right, so we have a one cable here. This is a negative. So the negatives are all bundled together. And I like how the primary cables have negative and positive on little paper tags on the actual wire. So you can tell which is which.
it is all integrated into that framework. So let's put the bolts back on. All right, next step. So I put a little lubricating oil on these nuts. <laughs> so uh, which nuts? These nuts. So we're taking that out. There we go. So the trick is to push down with the screwdriver and push outward with my thumb to push it down and out. And now, is the moment we'll see. And there we go. This is Jay from Stealth Camp Baltimore. If you like this video, please like it and subscribe to my channel to be notified of new videos. If you want to learn more about stealth camping in a tiny home, living rent-free and mortgage-free, please visit StealthCampBaltimore.com. You can find a link to the website in the description, as well as a link to all tools and products shown in this video. Subscribe today and check out my other videos in this tiny home stealth van build series.